Well, welcome, everybody. This is your host, Ken D. Foster. I have a question for you. You know, my tagline on the show is to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. But have you ever asked yourself, how do I see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible? Have you ever taken some time and just contemplated or meditated on the space between your thoughts? You know, Albert Einstein once said, all I want to know are the thoughts of God, the rest are details. Today, we have a lot of fancy words for that, you know, super conscious mind, the universe, the, uh, uh, you know, even even uh, con- subconscious mind. You know, there's, there's a whole bunch of words that we use to describe this space that we tune into, right? Well, today, my guest is going to help you explore your inner space. She's an expert at it. And we're going to take a help you to take a little deeper dive into maybe finding out a little bit about more yourself and what's possible. I mean, it has been said, ye are gods. Well, are you acting in that way? Are you stepping into that place within you? And are you able to do the impossible at all areas of your life? Well, if not, stay tuned to this because we're going to be exploring just how to do that. Are you over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days? I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. Call now for this free book on maximizing your income in retirement. Annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers from leading financial firm J.D. Melberg. That's right, free. This book reveals little known truths about annuities in simple to understand terms. Grab a pen right now. Because we're about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known truths we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity, and it's free. Call 800-615-2282. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched numerous products and summarized rates and benefits of annuities, all from Silac Insurance Company. Call 800-615-2282. That's 800-615-2282. Call now. Imagine this is your money and someone wants to take it from you. Who is it? The IRS. Guess what? They want your money and they can take it. All of it if they want. Remember, they sent you that letter right over here that said, hey, you owe us a bunch of cash and we're going to take it from you right now. So what do you do? You fight back by letting our team of experts work it out with the IRS so you can keep your money. And hey, we're good at what we do. When you hire us, you get a team of guys on your side that know the IRS laws and will fight really hard to save your money. So if you owe the IRS a ton of cash and you want to keep it, call right now and learn for free how we can help you put it back in your pocket. Five minutes of your time right now can save you thousands of dollars. And the best part, it's a free call. So please call right now. This right here is confidence in a bottle. Makes me feel so much more confident than I've ever felt in my life. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Annette Figaro is here to tell us why she says... This one is for real. This one is for real, and I'm so excited. Not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines, and wrinkles. We even have a video, and all he uses is a small amount, and that's how easy it is. And I did this to my father. We were at home, four minutes, 34 seconds, completely gone. My real true opinion is holy Words I can't say on camera. (laughs) This is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. Feels great. Looks even better. At our $14.95 price, it's the best way to try Plexiderm and see it work after your first application. Call the number on your screen. Call 800-830-1358. 
Whether you're an active person that wants extra supplemental movement, maybe you want to keep your legs active while you work, or you wish to support your therapy at home, or you just want to build strength, increase your mobility, flexibility, and boost your circulation, Ellipse was made for you. Power-assisted exercise that frees your mind to enjoy your favorite seated activities. Just plug it in, place your feet, select your speed, and relax. Ellipse does all the work for you. Call now and order Ellipse. Well, welcome uh, back to the show, everyone. And I have promised I have my guest in studio, Sandy Hart. And uh, Sandy, welcome. It's great to have you. Hi. Thank you so much. I'm tickled to be here. Thank you. Oh, for it's, you know, after reading your bio and getting to know a little bit about you, at least on paper, I was sitting here this morning going, this is going to be a phenomenal interview. Not to put pressure on you. I just think we're going to have fun with this. Uh, let me just uh, give my uh, audience a little uh, background on you. Uh, Sandy Hart's an award-winning leader in the field of women's empowerment and interfaith community building. She founded the Women's Interfaith International Grassroots Organization, Sarah, at the Spiritual and Religious Alliance for Hope, now in its 20th year. Congratulations on that. That's amazing. Thank you. She, She's also uh, founded and served the director for the Charter of Compa Charter for Compassion's Women and Girls Sector, serving as a chair for the United Religious Initiative for North America, and serves on the Women's Task Force for Parliament of the of the uh, World's Religions. Um, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. So, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, you know, you, you have a, uh, your book out, right? <clears throat> and um, inside that book is something about uh, liminal odyssey. Is that right? That's the title, the liminal odyssey, <clears throat> the alchemical power of the spaces in between. Yeah. I love it. I love that. And when I heard that today, spaces in between, I thought that's where everything comes from, at least for me. <laughs> that's where the nectar is. That's where... The answers, uh, futurists and visionaries and even ascended masters have all said the truth is in between the spaces. It's in between. And yet we're, we don't spend a lot of time in between the spaces. Yeah. Most people don't. Right. Well, we, it's been enculturated out of us. Yeah. 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 For sure. And, and, that, and I'm so glad that you talked about time, taking the time. I coined the word time full to, you know, really shine more light on the idea of Kairos time, the time in which the truth will be revealed is how Aristotle put it. But Kairos time. What, what is Kairos time? What does that mean? We have Kairos time and you have Kronos time. Kronos time are how we manufacture time, right? We have the, the, we know that a minute is 60 seconds and things will happen in a certain time. This program is a certain amount of time. But sometimes Kairos time is God's time, is spirit's time, is the time in with the truth where the truth shall be revealed, as Aristotle put it. And um, Kairos time is where we have to enlist a certain amount of trust. We are so used to, especially in this culture, we are so used to um, needing to have our answers right now, right? What am I supposed to be doing? What is the meaning of this? What is the what's the story behind, you know, this sock in the stomach of, you know, this betrayal or this hurt or or this gem that I can I know there's something there, but I don't know more. And um, and to trust that in time, Kairos time, uh, it'll all make sense. It can happen in a flash. For me, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean long amounts of time. But for me, as I tell the story in my book. On one particular occasion, it took 30 years to really disclose the meaning of something that was so painful and, and tra traumatizing, if you will. I get what you're talking about, you know, and it is that, um, you know, I, I'm a long term meditator, so I've been meditating for decades. And when I still the mind, and I'm allow myself to go into the higher states of consciousness. The first experience I have is a sense of peace. 
and everything that's uh, I think is so important is is not there. There's just this com complete peace around me. So is that the space we're talking about here? It's definitely the space we're talking about, allowing that space. So many of us feel like we've got to get from point A to point B in a certain amount of time. And yet yeah. sometimes when you just rest, you know, w w we also seem in our culture to operate in a set of assumptions, the way things are supposed to be, not just the time in which things are supposed to happen, but the way things are supposed to be. And, and I think we've also been duped by patriarchy's charms over the millennia that that we have to accomplish certain things in a certain time yes or that we are on a path because we should be on that path but how many of us stop in that timefulness in that liminal space uh, apply timefulness i should say and really examine those assumptions right um and and i i really appreciate the fact that you practice your, your meditation, I practice as well and have for many years and uh, continue to practice. Yet um, I discovered that it's those moments of quiet, the still the mind, where we are allowing in a certain amount of curiosity because we are leaving ourselves open, yeah. right? And we're yeah. employing. Yeah. Yeah. curiosity and even vulnerability, like a sense like we don't know, or depends on what your meditation practice is. Perhaps yeah. you are, it's contemplative or you're, you know, or you really are stealing your mind completely. And, yeah. and Ken, I want to tell a story when I, or share a story yeah. when I was, um, I wrote a chapter about this, about my relationship with grandmother Ocean. And one of the greatest lessons that I learned from her was what it means to be tumbled in the white water. You know, if you, if any of you are on the West Coast or on the East Coast, where you got the or played in the ocean and um, and and you get tumbled under by a big a wave, um, you are sent into this topsy turvy, uncontrollable frenzy that we think we should have control over, right? And that's no different than circumstances that happen to us sometimes during our day. Um, we don't feel like we have control or we have to go about it in a certain way. Yet I discovered that um, because I grew up on the beach with toes in the sand, that the way to navigate those rough waters is to sink down below. Get as close to the ocean floor as you can and let it all go over you. And it will, because that's just nature. It will go over you because it's simply the nature of things. The I've grown up in Southern California too, and I have that experience, but I've never put the two together. That's right. Dive deep. Um, you know, with my meditation practice, I go, my goal is to go a little deeper every day, a little more stillness every day. So it's diving deep. That's, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. And what, yeah. Are, what are some of the experiences one can have when they go into lineal, uh, these lineal experiences? What, what would you say? Or what have you had? Well, you know, it, it really depends on what, you know, your intention is, mm -hmm. I think. You know, if you go mm -hmm. in with a sense of reverent listening, you practice the sacred art of listening. Um, there's this beautiful um, poem I guess you can call it a quote by Douglas Steers. It says, um, to listen someone into a condition of discovery and disclosure may almost be the greatest gift that one being human being performs for another. And, and when we, well, isn't that something? Well, that's right? a, that was a wow to me. I was like, oh, yes, that is such a gift. Yes, that is right. beautiful. And so when we're listening our soul and, you know, who has a purpose who our soul came we have a planetary assignment here we are every single one nobody is immune from this i'm absolutely confident in that everyone is here with their planetary assignment with their divine task what they are here to accomplish and so what gets discovered when you go deeper and when you set the intention open up for curiosity practice reverent listening listen with the intention to listen your soul into a condition of discovery and disclosure. Oh, wow. You're, it's mind blowing. You're, it, yeah. And we're each encoded with that seed. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I, I can only speak for myself, um, but I've heard it from many others. In that space is where everything changes. Um, it's that it's 
it's where we know ourselves. It's where we, uh, just yesterday, I had a download in that space that um, is generating a whole new summit <laughs> that's coming out in February next year. And it happened within, you know, I got it in meditation and then I was able to write out everything that's going to happen um, within 20, 30, maybe 40 minutes. It, just profound things happen like that in this space. So listen, I, I got to take a break. But when we come back, um, I want to just I want to back up a step and ask you, when did when did this happen for you? When did you start taking a deep dive? So we'll be right back. If you're living with diabetes and using insulin, you know the pain of pricking your fingers over and over again. By wearing a small remote device called a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM, you can reduce the pain of pricking your fingers right away. If you're testing your blood sugar four more times per day, injecting insulin three or more times per day, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetic Health Hotline today and learn about the latest CGM technology. Not only can a CGM immediately reduce pain, it's accurate, easy to use, and helps you make better diabetes treatment decisions. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little or no out-of-pocket cost. We'll also provide free shipping of your new CGM, and we'll bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four more times per day and injecting insulin three or more times per day or using an insulin pump, call now and learn how to receive your new continuous glucose monitor at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Hi, Ken D. Foster here. Are you in a place that you would like to unleash the power within your mind? I teach a class. It's called the Limitless Experience. This is about intentional living. It's a great opportunity to learn how to operate your mind efficiently, expand your knowledge, tap into your inner wisdom, and connect with like-minded individuals who are evolving and making a difference in this world. This class is designed to help you unlock your true potential and achieve success in all areas of your life. By attending this class, you will gain valuable insights into your life purpose, legacy, how to get unstuck, how to break chronic patterns that are stopping your success, overcome limiting beliefs, and develop a positive mindset that will help you achieve your goals. I hope to see you soon at the Limitless Experience. I've written a new book. It's called The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Wisdom to Unlock Your Genius, Your Soul, and to Transform Your Life. So it's daily strategies. I wrote this specifically because over the years I've noticed in my own life and in the lives of my clients that, listen, a little inspiration doesn't get it. A little wisdom doesn't get it. A little action doesn't get it. It's daily, dripping on the mind, dripping on those actions, taking specific focused actions towards your dreams and setting specific goals, right? Goals help us to transform the little self into the possibilities that we have in each of us. All of us are given dreams, and if you're sitting there and you're not manifesting that dream, it's just a little bit of you is chipping away every day that's not happening until you finally wake up and say, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to connect with something greater than myself, my force, my God, my life, my universe, whatever. I don't care what you call it. You tune into that force, and that's what's going to get you to the next level. Well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is your host, Kendi Foster. I'm talking with Sandra Hart. We're talking about her new book, Liminal Odyssey, and it's profound. It's it's deep. It's a deep conversation. So if you just joined us, um, stay tuned. When did you take uh, that first dive or what happened for you that got you into this space? Yeah, um, I <laughs> I didn't realize it, by the way, for 30 years, but I it, in 1982, I thought I was going to a no new Australian music festival called Peace Sunday at the Rose Bowl with 100,000 people. And we were all there to listen to a lineup of, of rock stars and everyone who was relevant since the 60s. And interwoven into the, the, the music was speak, were speakers and activists and politicians and environmentalists who were all there to implore upon us a rowdy, often stoned, <laughs> full day of concert goers about the importance of 
um, nuclear nonproliferation and protecting and restoring our planet. Um, and and right from the very beginning, the MC came to the microphone and announced that there had been a report from the par from the parking lot that somebody had left their dog in the car, that it was going to be a very hot day together. And if that was your car and your dog, please go roll your windows down. And there was this low grade hot boo that hushed over the crowd. And then the first speaker came to the mic and, um, and delivered a message, but I could not unhear you know, what about the dog? I couldn't hear of this, you know, if, you know, I was so concerned about the humanity and the, and the well-being of this dog. And when that speaker was done and the next band, and the first band was coming to, to play for us, um, I started yelling at the stage, what about the dog? I was stage left. Of course they could hear me, you know, they're, <laughs> if I was relentless and consistent, they would hear me. So I just started chanting, what about the dog? What about the dog? What about the dog? And um, I was drowned out. And then my moment came again between the band and the next speaker. I started up again, but now my friends started with me. And uh, we got, we got, you know, drowned out again. And um, it didn't take too many more cycles of this before our entire section was chanting, what about the dog? And, um, and I, I believe it was about noon where I heard it coming from the other side of the stadium. Now, this is the Rose Bowl in Southern California, 100,000 people. Everybody is there to watch, you know, these bands and listen to this, this information about nuclear nonproliferation. We're all there. It's a cause concert. Yet I was relentless and concerned about the dog. And now so were about 100,000 other people. And this chant went on for the entire day. And it, it, it took off without me. It did not need me to continue that chant. Um, and then around dusk, when Mr. Stevie Wonder uh, was led to the microphone, uh, the MC first made this statement. And she said, so you want to know about the dog? And the dog is fine. <laughs> and flash is flying in the air. And you know, I, I I realized that um, that I'm not so sure that Mr. Stevie Wonder would have gotten his five minutes because he came to ask for five minutes of silence before he started playing. He wouldn't have gotten that silence because every time there was a lull, every time we could be heard, everyone was chanting. Wow! And I that was 15, 20 years later. I didn't have another story to tell. I told that story and. I've been urged to tell it ever since. Yeah. You know, it's such a powerful story because it's the power of what one person can do. And, you know, it, with the truth, right. And asking questions about truth, you know, asking questions that are pertinent to the, to, to love really to the love of that, of that little dog. And, you know, and um, we, if you're listening to the show, it's my, my question to you would be, you know, what's in your heart that you may need to shout out and, you know, get get more people to join you uh, in that uh, in that quest to overcome whatever was going on out there. So I, I love that story, Sandra. Thank you for that. And I love that you ask that question. It, yeah. I, in 2015, I was asked the question, what is your divine assignment? Hmm. And if you don't know. It's a question to ask. And if you do, why aren't you fulfilling it? And are you fulfilling it to your highest purpose? That re that required me. And by the way, I didn't know at the time. Yeah. That required me to go silent. And it showed up in Cairo's time six months later. Yeah. Because I asked the question. Simple, and that's all you have to do. If you yeah. don't, don't work too hard on it. Just ask the question. Your soul will light up. Yeah. And, and if you have a problem asking the question, I have a book called Ask and You Will Succeed, A Thousand and One Ordinary Questions to Create Extraordinary Results Within You. And I only bring that up because that is my divine uh, mission is interviewing, is asking questions. And, and, you know, I've been doing that for 26 years in coaching and, of course, on my shows and everywhere else. So, um that's uh, and by the way, the point of that was 
even when I wrote the book, that wasn't like, oh, this is my mission. I just needed to write the book. But now I get. There's been too many times that this the soul comes out and says, this is it. Go do this. <laughs> That's because you were in your integrity, which is one of the 12 skills that I talk about. But you have to. Oh, yeah, I want to I want to talk about that. I want to talk about those 12 skills. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and being in I, don't, I don't know if we can do all 12, but yeah. maybe, you know, because I think, you know, let, let me do this. Let me uh, uh, I want to put the uh, the book up on the screen, first of all, because I want people, my my audience to be able to see it and, uh, and my listening audience to be able to get it. So it's lim uh, the uh, Liminal Odyssey. It's by Sandra Hart. And Sandra, where can they get the book? Uh, it's available on my website at liminalodyssey.com and use the passcode, I mean, the um, promo code alchemy for a discount and free shipping. And it's also okay. available on Amazon. And by the way, I don't live in a green screen. I'm actually in the recording studio right now, finishing the audiobook. So soon it'll be available on audiobook. Oh, that's so nice. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Well, I look forward to getting that audiobook. I, I don't know if your uh, your producer sent me uh, uh, or your press people sent me a book or not, but um, I hope they did. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's I love books like this. And we take a deep dive. All right. Listen, I got to take a quick break. When we get back, though, let's go into some of the benefits that the audience would get from the uh, from reading the book. And I think those uh, can be probably laid out in those 12 skills that are outlined in the book. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Imagine this is your money and someone wants to take it from you. Who is it? The IRS. Guess what? They want your money and they can take it, all of it if they want. Remember, they sent you that letter right over here that said, hey, you owe us a bunch of cash and we're gonna take it from you right now. So what do you do? You fight back by letting our team of experts work it out with the IRS so you can keep your money. And hey, we're good at what we do. When you hire us, you get a team of guys on your side that know the IRS laws and will fight really hard to save your money. So if you owe the IRS a ton of cash and you want to keep it, call right now and learn for free how we can help you put it back in your pocket. Five minutes of your time right now can save you thousands of dollars. And the best part, it's a free call. So please call right now. This right here is confidence in a bottle. It makes me feel so much more confident than I've ever felt in my life. They are some of the hottest videos on social media. Those videos claiming to instantly get rid of bags under your eyes. Annette Figueroa is here to tell us why she says this one is for real. This one is for real and I'm so excited. Not only does it work on the bags, it works on the appearance of crow's feet, fine lines and wrinkles. We even have a video and all he uses is a small amount and that's how easy it is. And I did this to my father. We were at home, four minutes, 34 seconds, completely gone. My real true opinion is holy Words I can't say on camera. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. It feels great. Looks even better. At our $14.95 price, it's the best way to try Plexiderm and see it work after your first application. Call the number on your screen. Call 800-830-1358. Whether you're an active person that wants extra supplemental movement, maybe you want to keep your legs active while you work, or you wish to support your therapy at home, or you just want to build strength, increase your mobility, flexibility, and boost your circulation, Ellipse was made for you. Power-assisted exercise that frees your mind to enjoy your favorite seated activities. Just plug it in, place your feet, select your speed, and relax. Ellipse does all the work for you. Call now and order Ellipse. Are you ready to uplift your thinking, redefine what's possible, and have the energy, passion, and power to accomplish your greatest dreams? Hi, this is Ken D. Foster. For 28 years, I've coached over 10,000 people to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. Now, I've put the time-tested wisdom principles into my latest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Essential Wisdom to Awaken Your Inner Genius. This book changes your thinking as you read it, 
It's time to change it deep inside. You know this. So come on, expand what's possible. Increase your courage. Step into your destiny. And order today at CourageToChange.us. That's CourageToChange.us. When you order today, you'll receive a personalized coaching session with me. Obviously, this is a limited offer. So why wait? Change for the better and order now at CourageToChange.us. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. Let's have a smile on my face because I really love this interview. I like where we're going with it. Um, all right. So some of the skills that are in the book that would help people to have their own liminal experience. Let's uh, let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, first, the skills that are listed in the book may not be a surprise to a lot of people. It's the confluence of the skills that where the real magic is. It's the um, what it, the, that they all operate as building blocks and that they should all be um, uh, cultivated together. And when I say skills, um, they, they're skills because they require practice. Because when we practice, and which is, I, Ken, I know, which is big for you, I've had a chance to look at your book, The Courage to Change Everything. And I know that you um, value the importance of practice. And uh, because we create new neural pathways in our mind. I mean, it's just science that the more we practice, the more something becomes ingrained in who we are, it becomes the fiber of who we are. So we ultimate goal is to practice skills that are habits, actually. Um, and the first being reverent listening, which we've spoken about. Um, the reverent listening is the ability to, uh, uh, you know, our culture doesn't do a very good job at listening. And I think, and I've said this before, we're acculturated out of it. I mean, television commercials alone, you know, in, you know, they throw, we get 15 or 30 commercials in, in 15 or 20 minutes it, or seconds, it feels like. And it's all about how we can be better and healthier and happier if we buy their stuff right now. Yet we don't aren't given the time to stop and think, wow, is this really good for me? So stopping and listening into what's really important in that timefulness, which is another skill, what that does is it allows us to cultivate synchronicities. And synchronicities, you know, these meaningful experiences that connect to otherwise not meaningful, you know, not not um, um, not similar events together, but together they become meaningful because there's some thread there. Um, those are more than just synchronicities or wild coincidences. They're really um, they really are our treasures. They're really where the message is. Pay attention to those. And it's hard to pay attention to those if you're not practicing reverent listening and being timeful. Um, and also, this is a really important practice, and we did touch on this, and that's um, being impeccable and in our integrity. Like you were, when you're writing your book, you wrote it because it, or it wrote you perhaps. That's what happened to me. Yeah. It wrote me. So how are we impeccable singing our own song, showing up with, you know, to honor our, our and asking the question about our soul's purpose? That requires reverent listening. That requires, you know, paying attention to those synchronicities, which is how we cultivate them. We see more and more and more. I thought I was sitting out to write, setting out to write one story about what about the dog. That was a story my friends have been urging me to tell for 15 years. But until I, until I went deep, like you talked about, 
until I went deep, I hadn't really realized how many more stories were connected. This is a storyline, actually, of my, my life. You know, every story in here, every chapter is a story of different things. One led to the other because I learned how to listen, because I learned the meaning of the synchronicities, because I practiced timefulness. Um, and also because, you know, we are, I believe we're in an evolutionary growth spurt right now, Ken. I don't know if you feel the same way, right? We are well, if you, if you haven't looked around and, uh, you know, you haven't seen the pandemic or maybe some extra wars or maybe a drought or two or some extra weather that we may have not had or the you know, polarization of people, you know, if you, if you can't see that, then uh, you might not think we are in, a, in an upscaling right now. <laughs> yeah, necessity is the mother of invention, right? I think in this time, though, physicists are even saying that, yeah, of course, we have these external signs. These are signs, right? These are like not just little hints from Mother Nature that we better get our act together. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have this piling on of crises, yet another sign that we're in an evolutionary, evolutionary growth spurt are people like you writing books like you write. And the folks that I know I get to hang around with, evolutionary thought leaders and visionaries and futurists and, um, and more and more and more seekers, more and more people whose curiosities are perked right now going, oh, I really, that's interesting. And I'm feeling something. This is this, you know, the first, the first um, um, quantum discovery, right, where quantum physics became a thing was in the turn of the century in the, from the 18 and the 1900s, where physicists started seeing the spaces in between the molecules, right? And then, the, and then the, the, the understanding that we live in a mental universe, it's not a machine, right? And the power of our thoughts and right. our gene activation, which can, in, creates our create our um, reality. And I know I'm going deep here and, and not going to stay here. But the fact remains that we are, the scientists are now seeing that we are in a second quantum evolutionary evolution. So it's more than just the piling on a crisis or, or, the, or the rise of visionaries and rise of people like yourself and all your listeners I trust and that are going, hmm, there's something else that I need to be knowing or doing or different, that I should be changing everything. Yeah. Um, well, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's, um, you know, meditation, let's say 20 years ago, 30 years ago, if you would have said to somebody, I'm a meditator, they'll look at you cross-eyed, like what? You know, it's commonplace today. Yoga, same thing, commonplace today. Um, you know, something that uh, I would say, uh, oneness, the concept of being uh, one, we're all connected. You know, it's, it's new to the West, but ancient, uh, uh, civilizations have used that and understood that grandmother, grandfather, uh, you know, everybody was your relative. The Native Americans uh, believe that. So it's, uh, uh, you know, these concepts have been around, uh, you know, for a while, but people are, are now starting to step into it. And there are hundreds of thousands of people talking about this because it is the time for us to evolve our thinking and our being as a as a uh, or remember our being not evolve our being we just remember who we are you know it's been said ye are gods we should pay attention to that um we're always creating right what are we creating we're either creating you know good goodness or we're creating something else right we live in duality so your book touches on so much of this and it's just the timing is so right for this i'm i'm just pleased to, to have you here with me um, I want to, you know, I want to back up with synchronicities for a second. And, um, I, you know, I, I, it's, I think there's a core belief that people may want to embrace if you haven't already, that everything is showing up perfect for you. Okay. Like it's showing up perfectly. So if you really knew that it's showing up perfectly, then you would probably pay more attention to what is showing up, Right. Yeah, and the synchronicities, the miracles, the magic, the synchronicity that shows up always, always, if we if we allow, if we open our eyes, um, I mean, to the point where it sometimes gets really blatant. Like I've, I, I remember when I was first noticing synchronicities, I walked to a restaurant and the restaurant said a C rating. And I was like, 
it's in the window. And I'm like, a C rating? Let me see. I don't think I want to eat at a C rated restaurant, <laughs> right? You know, but blatant things are there, you know? Or, you know, you'll 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 see a sign somewhere that says, you know, danger, right? And if you pay attention, it's there, right? Okay. Anyway, I th- it was with you, with synchronicities. I want to take a deeper dive with that. So how do people start to really pay attention to those synchronicities? Um, I got to take a quick break, but when we come back, we will talk about that. Okay. If you're living with diabetes and using insulin, you know the pain of pricking your fingers over and over again. By wearing a small remote device called a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM, you can reduce the pain of pricking your fingers right away. If you're testing your blood sugar four more times per day, injecting insulin three or more times per day, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetic Health Hotline today and learn about the latest CGM technology. Not only can a CGM immediately reduce pain, it's accurate, easy to use, and helps you make better diabetes treatment decisions. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little or no out-of-pocket cost. We'll also provide free shipping of your new CGM, and we'll bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four more times per day and injecting insulin three or more times per day or using an insulin pump, call now and learn how to receive your new continuous glucose monitor at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Do you listen to the TV on high volume or have trouble hearing conversations? Then you would benefit from hearing aids. Don't waste thousands on expensive hearing aids when you can get MD Hearing's revolutionary Neo hearing aids for just $299 a pair. Don't be fooled by higher priced hearing aids. The Neo is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. With rechargeable technology many customers say is superior to more expensive models. Call now and get not one, but two Neo hearing aids for just $299. Plus, we'll add in a portable charging dock and ship your order absolutely free. The Neo is nearly invisible with its tiny in-the-ear canal design. And you can get two Neo hearing aids with a 45-day risk-free trial, free shipping, and free lifetime U.S.-based support for only $299. So call now. 800-789-7885. Again, that's 800-789-7885. Everybody wants a whiter smile because having white teeth projects confidence and attractiveness. Power Swabs is as easy as snap, swab, and smile. You'll notice two shades whiter teeth in five minutes and six shades in seven days. The thing I love about Power Swabs is the convenience. Break it open, just rub it on your teeth, and you're done. So I noticed I have a lot more stains on the sides. So with the Power Swab, I was able to go in there, and it really did work. Just snap the Stain Out Swab to remove stains from natural teeth, as well as caps, crowns, and veneers. Then snap the Whitening Swab to whiten your teeth six shades in seven days. With Power Swabs, there's no messy strips, trays, or lights. Having shades lighter on my teeth in such a short period of time, it almost feels like cheating. Try Power Swabs today and get 50% off your order. Plus, get a free quick stick pen and free shipping. Visit powerswabs.com or call the number on your screen. Hi, Ken D. Foster here. Are you in a place that you would like to unleash the power within your mind? I teach a class, it's called the Limitless Experience. This is about intentional living. It's a great opportunity to learn how to operate your mind efficiently, expand your knowledge, tap into your inner wisdom, and connect with like-minded individuals who are evolving and making a difference in this world. This class is designed to help you unlock your true potential and achieve success in all areas of your life. By attending this class, you will gain valuable insights into your life purpose, legacy, how to get unstuck, how to break chronic patterns that are stopping your success, overcome limiting beliefs, and develop a positive mindset that will help you achieve your goals. I hope to see you soon at the Limitless Experience. I've written a new book. It's called The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Wisdom to Unlock Your Genius, Your Soul, and to Transform Your Life. So it's daily strategies. I wrote this specifically because over the years I've noticed in my own life and in the lives of my clients that 
Listen, a little inspiration doesn't get it. A little wisdom doesn't get it. A little action doesn't get it. It's daily, dripping on the mind, dripping on those actions, taking specific focused actions towards your dreams and setting specific goals, right? Goals help us to transform the little self into the possibilities that we have in each of us. All of us are given dreams, and if you're sitting there and you're not manifesting that dream, it's just a little bit of you is chipping away every day that's not happening until you finally wake up and say, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to connect with something greater than myself, my force, my God, my life, my universe, whatever. I don't care what you call it. You tune into that force, and that's what's going to get you to the next level. Well, welcome back, everybody. This is Ken D. Foster. Synchronicities, synchronicities. Let's take a little deeper dive with that, Sandra, and, and uh, explore a little bit about that. Yeah, the stuff that life is made of, it's right there. It's the, our Indra's net. Um, everything is connected, right? It, um, we are all connected like this oneness that you speak about and the storylines and the experiences that we happen, happen to have all are connected with these pearls of wisdom. If you've ever seen an Indra's net, an Indra's net um, is, and you could just Google Indra's net and, you know, I'll show you all kinds of images of the, it's the, a net that spans the vastness of the universe. And if you look at the connect and connection points of all the lines. Those lines are our storylines. Those lines are our experiences. Those lines are the things that happen to us during the day or appear either, like you say, blatantly or not so blatantly, or, or you have to actually be aware and you'll see them if you pay close attention, mm -hmm. um, are each connected with the pearl of wisdom. They're each connected with, with, um, so, with something or someone. Um, and to your point, Ken, I think that um, that we have to get uncomfortable too, to, to cultivate synchronicities and to recognize these things like, um, like, like things that happen to us that are not pleasant, right? Not just the joyful things that we see, but those, um, allies that, um, were once villains in our story. Um, and so my point in using this net as an expression is that these lines are at our feet all day long. So paying attention to what's going on is really uh, requires reverent listening and timefulness. And you know, these skills that I, I, I sort of brushed over a few of them. And, and what happens is because you are asking the question and because your eyes are willing to see more and more things that make sense. Like you, you, you see a big C rating on a, on a restaurant window and you pass by it and then you see a big C on a bus going by with, you know, something that has meaning to you. And it's like, then you can start drawing lines and going, okay, what's going on here? And what am I supposed to know? Where's the message here? And a year down the road, someone's going to tell a story about this bus that had a C on it and a restaurant that had a C rating. This is just such an off the cuff ex experience, but this is what happens. And this is where in my, in which I demonstrate in the book through my storytelling, how these wild synchronicities just appeared to me that happened to have been the most important um, answers to, to questions that I um, really needed answering. And they took their sweet time and Cairo's time. And yet the more we pay attention to those, those, signs, you know, the more we t pay attention to them, I call them treasures or gifts that fall at our feet during our day, the more they start unfolding. Mm -hmm. The more you start going, hmm, what was that about? I never see a centipede in my house. Why am I seeing a centipede now? Mm -hmm. And then ask that question. And before you know it, something relatable will show up that has meaning to that centipede. Just start asking and experience it yourself. It is. And, you know, and sometimes those signs are signs that we really need to pay attention to. Uh, you know, I know that, uh, you know, it's been my experience that if we don't pay attention, we get a little tap. And then if we don't pay attention, we might get a little slap. And if we don't pay attention, we might get hit over the head by two by four. So <laughs> it's really important to pay attention to some of this, the, uh, the, uh, what's going on with us in, you know, I, I think there's another piece to that, that uh, it's a practice that I do every every day. 
And it's uh, uh, after meditation, what I'll do is I'll, I'll contemplate and, and I'll review my day. I'll just ask myself what worked, what didn't work, and what can I do better tomorrow? But in asking that, a lot of times it comes to the surface, maybe something that's off that I really need to pay attention to. Um, you know, it, I start out in the morning in gratitude, but I end the day with those questions because, you know, it's introspection is really important. Um, in fact, I got a feeling the whole book is about introspection, <laughs> how you in, introspect, you know, introspected everything that was coming on and this book came through. Is that is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly chapter one. I didn't think I could write a reason I kept putting this book down after yeah. over 15 years because wow. I didn't have enough of a story to write. And that's because I hadn't lived these experiences and learned about timefulness and learned about reverent listening and learned about you know the importance of dumping intergenerational trauma and behaviors that no longer serve me. You know, all of these things that I consider wow. skills. But it was when I went down deep because I had to fill up a page, right? Yeah. I had to fill up a book. So I started yeah. thinking about what was going on in my body. Body awareness is a big one. Wow. Well, you know, I uh, I re rewrote my latest book, The Courage to Change Everything. Six, uh, it uh, I rewrote it completely about three times. It took me six years. I thought that was a long time to write a book. I talked to Stephen Covey, Stephen M. R. Covey, um, the uh, the son of Stephen Covey, who wrote Seven Habits of Highly Effective uh, People, yesterday, and he said uh, his dad. It usually took him about ten years to write a book. And now you're telling me it was 15 years for you. I'm just loving this. So there's a message for some of you that are listening to this right now. If you have that book in there and, uh, you know, it hasn't come out, it's time. This is the time. Yeah. And trust it will come in Kairos time, too. I'm yeah. putting the book down. I had more of a but I kept picking it up. That was the important part. Even though I kept putting it down, I kept picking it up and trying again. And when... And when spirit is ready for you and when you are ready and in alignment with that higher consciousness, when you are ready and it's supposed to happen, it will happen. But then the book poured out of me in about nine months. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. What do you think are the most profound parts of the new book, The uh, Liminal Odyssey? What are the most profound parts in that book? I end the book in a chapter of an experience that I had in Auschwitz. And for me, when I was writing it, and I get full body right now, even telling you about it, I, you may get a quiver in my voice even. Um, the day after visiting the death camp of where my ancestors, my Jewish heritage um, has gone through the, the Holocaust, um, I'm standing on this little river and just contemplating everything and trying to process everything because it's a heavy experience to be in Auschwitz and Birkenau. And I immediately downloaded this understanding and I actually heard it, but wherever it was coming from, wherever the message was coming from, I heard how important it was to live my authentic being. My ancestors were counting on me not to be stuck in their sorrow, um, but to live in their hope, to manifest my highest visions was to manifest their hope um, and that they choose love, which was mind blowing. I kind of feel guilty sometimes even repeating that, but that's what I heard. We choose love um, and so go forth in love. And at the same time, and what was so profound about that experience was not only this lesson that I had, but it culminated everything. It brought it all together. No wonder I couldn't really start this book because I hadn't been there yet. And I hadn't lived all those lessons yet. And so for me, it, it really taught me about the importance of being my authentic Wow, I really love that. Love that. There's a book in me that I've been waiting to uh, bring out for a while. And I, I get I get what you just said. The timing hasn't been there because I haven't lived what I needed to live to bring it out yet. Yeah. That's that's profound. Yeah. OK. And um, what uh, 
you know, as our, as our readers read uh, the book, as they read it, what will they, I'm going to put that back up on screen again. Um, so there's our book again, Liminal Odyssey by Sandra Hart. And where can they get it again? On Amazon or uh, on your website? Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Um, I know it's kind of being sold in other places, but my website, liminalodyssey.com, which has more and different programs and things going on there too. Great. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's that's wonderful. Um, so the uh, the people that have read the book, what are they walking away uh, saying? What What are they getting out of it, right? I hope they're asking questions. Right. Perhaps my story that is relatable. Perhaps there's something there that they they can relate to in that way. Um, my hope is that we just the idea, you know, to acknowledge your soul and that your soul ha came here w through you to live out a purpose and to honor that. And also um, that pain is as important as our uh, to our to our bliss as is the joys and to pay attention to that and to trust that it really helps yeah. and then just sink down under that white water yeah. let it pass over you its nature it will yeah you know i would i would suggest that our our pain our struggle our dark side is is a gift and it doesn't seem like a gift when you're in it right but i would suggest that everybody that is conscious makes changes they evolve they remember who they are um through those those times so i'm so happy you mentioned that and um, they bless those experiences right ken yeah. that they thank them that and that's another another skill of forgiveness but that makes up the fiber of who they are that that helps inform all their beautiful parts, all yeah. of your beautiful parts. I'm not talking yeah. to them. I'm talking to you. So, um, yeah, it's I'm talking to all of us. I'm talking to myself is really what I'm doing. Absolutely. Yeah, honor it. Cherish the dark side, that, the shadow, you know, cherish it and then shine a light on it. Yeah. And then and then remember. All right. Well, listen, that's I'm out of time. Thank you so much for being here. This is a wonderful interview. It uh, uh, exceeded my expectations. So thank you for being here, Sandra. Thank you for this space. I really enjoyed being with you, Ken. I can't wait to get your books. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for those of you, thank you for mentioning that. I'll put my book up there real quick so they can see that. They can get the Courage to Change Everything at CourageToChange.us. All right. Well, I'm going to close out here. Thank you again, Sandra. For those of you that are listening today, I want to thank you for being here. You can get all of our replays at VoicesOfCourage.us. And, of course, you can tell Alexa, Cortana, or Siri, just play Voices of Courage podcast, and uh, it'll play right for you <laughs> immediately on your radio or uh, wherever you are. So uh, I want to say this. The guests that pour their heart out on this show, I hope you'll support them and uh, really take a little deeper dive into what they have to uh, share. And for you that have family or friends or associates that you'd like to see grow and change and have the best uh, experience in life, I hope you'll ask them to tune into the show too. From my heart to yours, until we meet next time, I hope you continue to see the unseeable and know the unknowable and do the impossible. Mm -hmm.